Brothers and sisters uh, watching online and on site, good morning to you. Today we are reading Numbers chapter 9. So my title today is by In God's Grace, We Keep Up With God's Wisdom. Rhythm. We must keep up with God's rhythm. In order to follow His rhythm, sometimes we need to lay aside our plans. Yes, we do have our own plans. But when God has special leading over us, we need to lay aside our plans. That's a grace of God. And in, that, in such a grace, we continue forward. Chapter 9, verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel keep the Passover at its appointed time. So he said it in the first month of the, of the second year. So Numbers chapter 1 started in the second month of the second year, but now it's the first month of the second year. So God did not record the whole thing according to the chronological order. So God changed the order. It shows us that He wants to show us something. There is a special uh, idea, message to us. Chapter 1, chapter one and 2 talk about the camp, camp of the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes must encamp around the tabernacle of meeting. Chapter 3 and 4 talk about the camping and the ministry of the Levite. Everyone must settle down first. And after that, then in chapter 5, we need to have good relationship. After everyone is settled, we need to have good relationship. We have holy body and we have harmonious relationship with others. We need to have a good marriage, good marital relationship. When we live together, we need to have live in harmony. And then when we do this, then everyone can have longing for God. Then that's why everyone can become a Nazarite in chapter 6. So that's the sequence, the order. We have good relationships. And then we can have longing for God. The order is important. And the leaders must take the lead and bring offering. That's in chapter 7. Because they took the lead to bring offering, that's why later on they were chosen as leaders of the tribe. The order they took the lead to bring offering decided the order of camping. And then chapter 8 talk about how we dedicate the Levites. So the Levites uh, replace the firstborns of Israelites. So after the leaders brought offering, then is bringing the firstborn to uh, firstborn to God. Now we are in chapter nine. In grace, we keep up with God's rhythm. The first paragraph, verse one to fourteen. In salvation, in longing, we move forward. In salvation, in longing, we move forward. 
So here, God told the Israelite to celebrate the pass, to observe the Passover. That's the second Passover. The first one, they celebrated in the land of Egypt. And that night, they put the blood of the lamb over the threshold of the door. And then they left Egypt afterwards. <coughs> now is the time here. <coughs> they had to celebrate the second Passover. So they had made some arrangement and plans. God told, God spoke to Moses. That's what in verse one says. Verse five. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did. So there is a problem here. Some of them, uh, some of them were defiled by a corpse. They cannot observe Passover. <coughs> That's the regulations. And they say, I, it, we didn't do it in purpose, that we are defiled by a corpse. Why are we, why are we for, forbidden from bringing the uh, offering? So they asked Moses. What should Moses do? <coughs> Moses didn't say, oh. So Moses did not reply straight away. They say, okay, that it makes sense, but let me ask God first. Verse 8, And Moses said to them, Stand still, and that I may hear what the Lord will command concerning you. So I want to say that it's right for us to follow God. But we need to interact with God. So, okay, uh, God, you have this uh, ordinance, these rules, then I am defiled, I cannot observe. Okay, uh, but you can also say that, no, actually, I really want to observe that. So when we observe, when we follow God, we need to go forward in longing. So they ask such a question. We all can ask questions. Maybe when we ask, we will be given an answer. And after they ask this, Um, Moses heard from uh, God, if you really want to uh, keep this, then on the 14th day of the second month at twilight, they may keep it. Verse uh, 11. Okay, pay attention to God's answer. Verse 10. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, if any of you or your posterity is unclean because of a corpse, or is far away on a journey, he may still keep the Lord's Passover. A lot of time we ask questions concerning us. They ask for themselves. Now, we are defiled by a corpse, but we want to keep it. What should we do? So, but here God say you and your posterity. Uh, I ask questions regarding myself, but God answers about myself and my descendants.
So my question is, if anyone is defiled because of a corpse, but God say that God is saying this a, a bit a broader sense. Uh, not just because you are unclean because of a corpse, but if you are also away, far away on the journey. So those who are uh, far away on the journey, they could be exempted. Oh, you don't have to observe Passover. But if you really still want to observe that, then you do it a month later. We ask questions regarding ourselves. God answers according, uh, extending to generation to generation. And then in, put it in a broader sense, even including those who are far away on the journey. Verse 14, And even a stranger dwells among you, and we keep the lost Passover, he must do according to the rites of the Passover. Verse 14, God uh, <clears throat> see in a far-fetching result, whatever situation you are in, as long as you have such longing, and you are not an Israelite, you are far away on the journey. You long to observe this festival, then you can observe it. So God expand, extends His grace. But if you can observe, you don't observe, you will be cut off from among the people. That's on the first day, a uh, 14th day of the first month. Because God wants the Israelites to observe Passover for generation of generation. So he wants the Israelite to remember that he is the God who saves. God say, I will save you. You need to remember this generation, your next generation, and your generations after generations, you must remember. If you don't want to observe this, it's like you reject God's salvation. It's like For those Israelites who did not put the blood of the lamb over the threshold of the door, the door frame, then the, the plague of the firstborn will also be taken away. They will be killed. They will lose salvation. So God wants the people of generation after generation to remember this fact. So it happens that we are going to celebrate the resurrection, the crucifixion, and the resurrection this week. So it's an ordinance, it's a rule as well as a revelation. Or at the end, it will point to Jesus died and rose again for us. When we follow God, we need to observe festivals. It's a grace because it's reveal, it reveals God's grace and salvation. When we come to the New Testament time, we don't observe all festivals listed in the Bible because the festivals point to Jesus. In the New Testament time, uh, so we care more for the Passover or the uh, the crucifixion. We care, then we care more for the crucifixion because the physical Jesus Messiah have come. Of course, you can also uh, celebrate Passover. So it's like you can celebrate birthday. 
uh, some celebrate birthdays, some cele don't celebrate their birthdays. If you celebrate birthdays for others, they will be happy. So that's the idea of festivals. Now the second paragraph, verse 50 to the end, 23. Lay down our agenda to follow God. And follow leaders to go forward. Lay down our agendas to follow God and follow the leaders to go forward. So here you talk about the cloud, uh, the pillar of clouds. On the day that the tabernacle was raised up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, verse 15, from evening until morning. It was above the tabernacle like the appearance of fire. Verse 16, so it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. Verse 17, whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, after that the children of Israel would journey, and in that place where the cloud settled, there the children of Israel would pitch their tents. So the children of Israel journey or camp according to the signal given by the pillar of clouds or pillar of fire. The second paragraph talks, uh, maybe the second paragraph could have ended in verse 17. Verse 18 to 23 is like, a, to a certain extent, uh, it's almost like uh, additional, but is 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 same whether with or without part. Verse seventeen said clearly, whenever the cloud was taken up from above it, after that they will journey, and in that place where the cloud settled, there the children of Israel will pitch their tents. It's very clear. But God repeatedly tells us this message. Okay, and then verse 18, at the command of the Lord, the children of Israel would journey, and at the command of the Lord, they would camp. As long as the cloud stayed over the, above the tabernacle, they remained encamped. Even when the cloud cont continued long many days above the tabernacle, the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and did not journey. Verse 19. It says repeatedly, Um, here, verse 19 tells us that if you don't journey, you are also following God. Because the cloud has not moved. The cloud has not moved, I will not move. That's the following the Lord's command. When the cloud moves, I move. Then that's following the command of the Lord. Whether we journey, whether we camp, we need the instruction of God. So if we apply it to today's, for example, if we want to change a job, we need to know clearly the leading of God. It's best that you you receive the signal from God, then you change your job. That's the best. Oh, that's better. Then the blessing will be great. 
because God will lead every one of us. When I was about to start full time ministry, so and then my boss told me that they just had an annual uh, strat uh, strategic planning in July. Uh, why don't you leave next June? That really makes sense to me. And I asked God. And God said, no, if you leave at, at, in December, there will be special grace. That's God's rhythm. It's whether to quit your job or not. But when to quit your job? God is awesome. He, God told me there will be special grace. That means if I did not if I had not quit the job in September, I would have never know what that grace is. And then I will ask myself all my life, what that special grace if I quit in September that year? <coughs> so I did quit in September. I was classmate with Pastor Joshua. That was his last three months in uh, Agape. So we were classmates for three months. That's a rhythm of God. We need to keep up with God's rhythm. If we are too slow or if we are too quick, it's not that good. Okay, I think I can stop here. No, maybe not. Uh, Pastor Deborah had received uh, <clears throat> that he she would come to Hong Kong, and then she came straight away to Hong Kong, and she got the ticket and she came, and nothing happened, and she went back to Hong Taiwan. But because she did that. That it show she showed God how serious she was about God's calling. When Pastor Joshua decided to have a church of fivefold ministry, and immediately we thought about Pastor Deborah. So that's then they met in Taipei. The second time Pastor Deborah came to Hong Kong, it was a year later. If we look at it in the long term, yes, she still end up in Hong Kong, but she had to wait an extra year in Taiwan. I had received that I would come to Hong Kong. But I want to wait for the circumstances to start the way to. But then Pastor Deborah prayed for me that I should make the initiatives. Otherwise, two years I would not I would not be able to enter into Hong Kong for two years. That's God's rhythm. Yes, there are many things we can do. But if you are Hey, willing to lay down your agenda. Normally, we do our own things, right? God gives us free will. God wants us to make planning. That is great. But what if the clouds already departed? You must journey straight away. You need to lay aside your agenda. Then the blessing will be great. And say, no, I just don't want to journey. Yeah, that's fine. The cloud has departed. There is no cloud above you. And then you will be really, really hot. That's the situation. You still la uh, left, but <laughs> you will become darker. <laughs> Uh, 
there will be special blessing if we follow, keep up with God's rhythm. We do make our own agenda, make planning, but then we are able to put it aside or at any time. It keeps repeating from verse 18 to 23. Verse 20 is also the same. <laughs> and according to... Uh, According to the command of the Lord, they would remain encamped, and according to the command of the Lord, they would journey. Same as 18, but just the other way around. Verse 22 is the same. Whether it was two days, a month, or a year, <coughs> you will remain en encamped or journey according to the command of the Lord. So he's telling us the detail of following God. <clears throat> this uh, chapter talks about an important concept. Verse 18. Sorry, it should be verse 23. At the command of the Lord, they remained encamped. And at the command of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the command of the Lord by the hand of Moses. It's a conclusion here. When we say we follow God, we actually follow the command of the leaders. It's the same as verse 5. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did. That's why I put the heading of a second paragraph, laid aside our agenda, follow God, and then follow the leaders to go forward. That's my heading for the second paragraph. That's true. We are following God. But we follow, we follow leaders in order to follow God. That's why our core value says that submission before revelation. Why do we have to follow leaders? Because God speaks to leaders. God teaches us this way, then we follow this way. Well, if the leaders has departed from God, we do not follow that leader. So when I say that the leaders has departed from God, that means that they, they uh, evidently has departed from the faith, for example. When the boss worship idols uh, at work, then they ask you. He asks you to follow. Of course, you don't follow. That's the uh, prerequisite. That's the condition. If your boss wants you to do overtime, uh, there is emergency task. You should do overtime. But if he wants you to do overtime every day, then it's not God first, people second, then the earth. Then you don't do that. Through following the leaders, we show God that we follow him. But it's not that rigid. You can, talk, you can communicate, just like observing the Passover. You are not qualified, then ask God, tell God. And when we follow God,
and if I say this, some people may feel like they're being oppressed or restrained. Actually, we have we decide on many matters ourselves. We need to seek God's guidance and blessings on many things. Then you know how to follow God. Then you can decide more and more on your own. We are all following God. We all see the pillar of cloud. But why are we following the cloud? Because God told Moses that everyone should follow the cloud. Yes, we do follow God. We follow God by following leaders. And then uh, our flexibility is crucial in this journey. We need to be very flex flexible. We need to be flexible uh, to follow God's leading or the adjustment of the leaders. Do not be like polarized. I just follow God and not follow leaders. If you don't follow leaders, why would God tell you things? Why? Because we follow the leaders to show that we follow God. Then God will have more revelation and leading on our lives. We need to ask God to help us. In grace, we keep following God. That's the end of our message. Let's worship our God.
Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Thank you. In the past, you guided us. In our low point, you let us turn around. We proclaim, we offer our thanks to you. You save us from the dust. Let's pray to God together. Pray to God that you are really a good God. You lead us through all the difficulties. Lord, I thank you because you led me to know you, to know your salvation, to know your amazing grace and miracle work. Attract me to follow you and attract my family members to follow you, Lord, I praise you. Yes, Lord, I praise you and thank you. Sometimes you let me experience you and encounter you in difficulties and between death and life, you saved my life. Sometimes I don't know, but when I grow up, Lord, you save me with your loving strength. You give me your salvation and you give me a spiritual home. Lord, I praise you. Yes, Lord, we are not worthy. We are not worthy as a sinner, but because of your grace, you give us salvation and you let us pass on this grace to our family members. In difficulties, you save us. Let's, two by two, we share how we experience the grace and salvation of God and how God helps us. Except share, besides sharing the salvation, and how much you long for God. And you can also share as well. Maybe for example, Shelly, how much you long for God. I long for God. In the middle of night, I went to the big fish to pray till morning. So you can share together. Let's intercede for one another if you are not as much as the past that you long forgot.
Lord, I thank you. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for saving me. Lord, in difficulties and trials, you protected me. Lord, thank you for your salvation and thank you for your love. Lord, when I first met the Holy Spirit every morning, I sat in my bed. I played the worship songs. The first thing, I draw close to you. That feeling, that experience was so sweet. It's also that a sister from you told me you accept me. But when I keep following you, and then I didn't set a part time for you. And I was, I kept in business. I just squeezed some time. But Lord, please help me to give me a heart to desire you, to ignite my heart. Let me come before your feet in your presence to experience you deeply and love you more and experience you more. Lord, my heart and my future, I hand it to you. May you guide me. Thank God. Yes, Jesus, in the past some days, I tasted your goodness. I know you're good. Nothing can be comparable with you. I always interacted with you. My thoughts, my words, a lot to struggles, I come before you because I don't want to lose your presence. I don't want to be a far away from your will. But when I follow you, this sensitivity has decreased. My heart didn't my heart don't follow you or desire you as the past. Your presence is gracious and precious. Holy Spirit, guide me to desire you more. Let's stand up and worship our Lord. Jesus, we thank you. Yes, through
through our life, we desire to follow you. Not only desiring to follow you, we also need to put aside our agenda and plans to follow you, brothers and sisters in our heart. We are a person who loves to plan. We have a lot of agenda in our hearts that no one can shake our agenda and plans, including God. All our sense of security builds on our own plans. Inside of me, there are a lot of frames, and they are very strong. Even my cellulars and my, my authority to share with me is, can be hardly be changed. My decisions cannot be changed by others. Just like today verses, when the clouds lift up, the people of Israel follow. The clouds wait on. Brothers and sisters, I want everyone to pray to God. If our sense of security builds up on our plans, it's good to have a plan, but we need to follow up with God's rhythm. We need to follow God's rhythm ultimately. We need to lay aside and down our agenda. For your sense of security, let's pray to God. God is your sense of security. Your plans, and actually God's plans is much better than your own plan. God's plan for your life is much better than yours. Let's pray to God. May God remove all the frames in our life, all the plans, that we can hardly move forward to follow God. Let's pray to God. Remove all the frames. Let us see that God is with us. Remove all the plans. It's like our masters. And they are like our sense of security. But today, I put my faith to God. Lord, you are my master. You are my Lord. You are the one who reigns in my life. Lord, you are the one who gives me security in my life. Not these plans, not these agenda. All these agendas cannot protect me, Lord. Only you, only you can protect me. Only you know my life. When to wait and when to move on. When to receive your blessings. When you will make a way. Jesus, I pray for all the brothers and sisters these brothers and sisters, when they were young, their parents are very straight with frames. And they are so used to these frames. Lord, we come before you to pray. You be their Lord. Their parents are not their Lord. Their teachers are not their Lord. You are their Lord. Only you are there, Lord. Holy Spirit, in their life, work and move. Softly remove all the frames from their authorities, especially including punishments and scoldings. All these frames being removed. Lord, Surround them with your clouds, protect them. Lord, you, because you are the one who saved us. You offer, you sacrifice your own son. Lord, 
like the lamb's blood on the door frames. Originally, we deserve to die, but you saved us. You saved us from the angel of death. You saved us. The salvation is so great. Deserves that we trust you and follow you, Lord. You use your clouds to replace all the authorities our parents that strong frames remove, remove all the chains be cut off. All those chains on our hands and feet be cut off. Maybe it's from society, Asians, Chinese, all the restraints from the cities be cut off, cut off. Let us solely follow you. Let us serve you only and worship you only. Lord, we praise you. Let's rise and worship our Lord. We follow him. Hallelujah. In spirit, to be the blessed Israelites in the in the wilderness. Tell God, I am willing to follow you. Yes, Lord, we offer ourselves to you. Yes, we are willing to offer ourselves and to follow you because our lives are yours. You guide 611 and be with us, brothers and sisters. Do you know we are entering in which flow of 611? How God will guide us? I'm happy to share with you. Pray, pray. I know many of brothers and sisters know the situation of our church you started praying already how many of you have already started praying the streams become the oceans our prayers got hears because when we have a lot of ministries or many attacks we choose to not speak because we don't want to have to quarrels and fight and actually, God knows the fact. So we don't have to defend for ourselves. But there are a lot of people who don't know the situations of, God, of our church. And then they step back and they no longer desire. And they even left church. I feel so hot pain. I feel so much pain in my heart. So I say, Let's rise and fight at the battle. This is not a battle of people but and the spirit. This is the spiritual warfare. 
Let's first pray for Pastor. He went to Africa. Before he went to Africa, he was already sick. And then he was carrying a sick body. And then he had to share messages and then have to communicate uh, with all the pastors. And then he was sick. And then when he went to Africa, to Dubai, and then to different districts in the spiritual realm, he carried a lot. And then he was attacked in spirit. He had bad dreams and nightmare. And he could not be so sensitive in his mind as well. Let's pray for our pastor. Raise your hands and pray. Later, I will send a message to all the cell groups to pray for pastor. Jesus, you hear all of our prayers. Pray aloud to, for pastor in spirit. We become the protecting clouds. Lord, you protect your servant. You protect your servants. You look after, including his throat, his body, be cleansed. To be protected thoroughly. All his thoughts and mind. Lord, you work in him. Pastors, mind be with you. All those from the spiritual realm, no matter in Africa or Dubai. All the dark power in Jesus' name I proclaim, all be cut off. All be cut off. All the death power, all the fear, the wizard, all to pray for pastor, to pray for Pastor, all the blood of Jesus protect Pastor Joshua to protect their sleep, to protect their dreams, be with them. Lord, we praise you. You see our brothers and sisters raising their hands, no matter on sign or a line. In Jesus' name, I proclaim, we pray because our God hears prayer. You, you guide us into prayer. You guide us into your spiritual flow. Not because of our piety, not because of our prayer, but because you make us pray. You help us pray. Save your sheep. And let not your sheep be swallowed. And not let them be stamped down. We praise you. We need you, Lord. Our church needs you. Lord, you be with us. Anoint us. We praise Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let's receive blessings. Jesus, in Jesus' name, I bless every brothers and sister. They desire to follow you. You cover them with your clouds, your sufficient cover them. In Jesus' name, I pray claim. Where they are, there is grace. Where there are, there is miracles because God is with you. In Jesus' name, I greatly bless you. Amen. Let's give hands to God and Jesus. Bless everyone. This is the end of our morning devotion.